Hello, and welcome to our podcast, The Magical Holistic Healing Arts. I'm Lynn Hicks. I'm Erica Hicks. And this is where we interview many practitioners of various modalities and learn greater ways to take care of ourself, our well-being, and our beauty. We are also proud distributors of Kangen Water, the life-changing elixir to our lives. And our machine makes beauty water, which is 6.0 pH. So your skin is your body's largest organ and requires the same nutrients as the rest of the human body in order to stay healthy. However, switching to environmentally responsible and chemical-free beauty products shouldn't be a sacrifice of quality. Enagic Beauty Water can unlock a world of clean, green, affordable products that really work. And we have an amazing website down below that can teach you how to make these products and give you so much information about this machine and Kangen Water. So check them out below. On today's episode, we have Diane Wing, a published author, life path coach, and teacher. And we're just going to ask her. She's a dear friend of mine. Exactly. Diane, what is your magical art? <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. And my magical art is what I think considered to be the foundational aspect of all magic. Whatever each person's magic is, you have to have energetic consciousness in order to put it forward, in order to use it to manifest, to change your reality, to understand other people, and to connect to the divine. And so it encompasses all of those things, but it takes practice, like any magical art, to become adept. And I think anybody can become this, but you're going to have to find, like I did, your own unique way of using this skill of energetic consciousness and finding where your power is coming from and how best to use these concepts because then it's your way. It's, it's your sense of things. You're going to find out how powerful you really are when you're open and when you're self-aware and this is one of the ways to do it and I think it's so important I wrote a whole book about it um, for people to really understand it and use it there's all kinds of um, exercises in there and stuff like I don't think this is this is magic that um, you should you should hoard Right, because it's really important for you to understand your energy, how your energy affects other people, how different situations impact it, and how whether or not you connect with the divine. I keep going like this because you know it comes in from the crown to into the crown chakra. Um, I think that once people understand that about themselves. You have peace. You feel centered. You're more understanding of other people. You're not so judgmental. And it really takes the drama out of everything, which I think the drama is what can really stress you out and, and hurt you ultimately. I like how you called it energetic consciousness. Mm. I can't say that I've heard that put that way before. Um, and that's a really great way to explore and think of yourself and your energy. Like I know I teach energy management. And it's really about knowing your energy and how you manage and use it and where you lose it and where you gain it. And I just never heard it put that way. So I love that explanation. Well, because, you know, it's really about to. Okay, so I, I'm energetically conscious, but what does that mean for me? So for my world, I send shifts that are coming, that are happening, and my reaction to those shifts. And then because I also, because I'm a life path coach and I'm guiding others to manage it, right? Because every time there's a shift, oh my God, it's change. And people get upset about change, right? But if you understand that it's just an energetic shift and that flowing with it creates less anxiety than um, resisting it, oh, life is so much easier. And But, you know, understanding those shifts and feeling them and feeling how other people are responding, that's, you know, but I'm also an empath. And I think that's part of it. 
but not everybody is an empath. So that's why you have to find your way and what your special gift is within the context of being energetically conscious. Well, I love your book. And I think it's a great way for people to really start to get an understanding. You know, it's like we're all this oneness and we're all one large field, but there's boundaries, there's, um, you know, ways that we can turn on, turn off, shift, get rid of. And your book is filled with lots of great practices regarding all of that. Um, is there like one thing that really makes the biggest impact on your energetic consciousness or really starting to learn? Because let's face it, drama, reaction, it's all hard to, you know, it sounds lovely. <laughs> now and then. Yeah, I think that um, it can vary for everybody. So if you are somebody who's a, uh, who, who's more internal, the external world is going to impact you harder Mm -hmm. Then if you're more of an external person, an extrovert, for example, my husband, uh, when we could go to sporting events, <laughs> he loves that sound of the crowd and the, the, the announcer on the loudspeaker and all this activity. And that would make me crazy. Like I can't, it, that just drains me. And but for him, it's stimulating. And so that's why self-awareness is so important. So what do you react to? What makes you feel better and heightens your energy? That definitely does not. I prefer peaceful music or none at all and just quiet, a natural environment. Um, and that's when I can feel my power and that's when I can rejuvenate and that's when I I can put myself in a position to better serve others, right? To be in high service to others. If you're a wreck because of your environment, whatever work you're doing, it's not going to be good for other people. Like other people can feel you and, and how they're, you know, experiencing that. So you, everybody's experienced a very hyper person, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And you can even tell without knowing them that well if you meet their animals. Their animals will also be hyper because their animals are reacting to that energy, right? And so um, can you tolerate that? Is that something that you really um, are okay with versus, you know, you want to be around more calm people, you like to bat banter, you know, uh, ideas and concepts is that what you enjoy or do you want like you know do you want to be singing karaoke in a bar when they open again um right so so the the way that we react to everything is such a personal choice right and that's why the the exercises in the book are important to do because it, it helps you really understand okay, what was I just kind of ignoring, right? So people get comfortable in their discomfort. Mm -hmm. They're, they might be living with somebody that's, that's anxiety provoking, but they've just learned to kind of ignore it. But it's still affecting them. They just don't understand how strongly that's affecting them. And so doing these exercises is really helpful. Um, the other thing you can do is take my vibrational quiz on my website, dianewing.com. So take the quiz. It takes about 10 minutes. Don't overthink it. And it'll give you a score. And it's also, it, you know, in the book, the, the quiz is in the book. Um, but you get a score and it'll give you your interpretation of that score. And you could see, oh, okay. Now I understand what I'm reacting to. Because it's, it's hard to self-observe. Totally. And I think it, you know, I like how you put it in, you know, notice what you're reacting to. Because that's pretty simple. I mean, everyone <laughs> knows they react to something. <laughs> but we know, you know, it's always like a problem or whatever. Instead of realizing in our reaction, we get great information. Mm about how we're responding to the world. 
you know, or people are like, oh, I don't want to react like that. They're trying to clear themselves or whatever. When just the reaction is telling you, hey, I'm not maybe thriving here. Is there a way I can shift this? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Like pay attention to your own stuff. Don't let somebody else dictate to you what you should or shouldn't be feeling or doing or reacting to and learn to ground and center. I mean, that's one of my key concepts. Grounding is, is critical to stay centered. Like a lot of people, if they're upset, right, it's all the upper half of their body. You don't even know you've got anything going on from your midsection to your feet. You don't even feel your lower body. It's all up here. Well, oh my God. <laughs> you've, you've experienced those people and it's like ah like just feel your feet on the floor and whew, it evens out that energy and that's so important to stabilize yourself so you can tolerate something in the moment that isn't good for you but then you can go away and go ugh I'm, I'm so glad I, I don't feel that anymore but the other thing is it's really important not to accumulate that denser energy, those energies that upset you, um, you know, you have to dump it. And on my website, there's a lot of free stuff on, on dianewing.com, so take advantage of it. But um, in an article, it's grounding and centering, and it's all about, you know, dump that energy that you've been sitting with into the ground. Do not do it in your house unless it's in the shower <laughs> over, the, over the drain. <laughs> but go outside and just dump it and then walk 10 feet away and pull in fresh earth energy. Mm. And then you're going to protect with white light coming down from divine mm. and coat yourself in it. And now you're ready for the next round of whatever you're needing to do. But if it accumulates too much, that's when illness happens. That's when, um, you know, anxiety and, and mental and emotional issues crop up because it's overwhelming. Yeah. And again, everybody's tolerance is different, but you have to understand your own. So yeah, totally, I recommend grounding and, and you know, dumping first and grounding as frequently as possible and then protecting. So there's a whole section on shielding. <laughs> And there are different shields for different purposes. You know, if if you're in, if you're on a, a bus and you don't want to talk to anybody, you put like a steel shield around you. Nothing can get in, right? You don't want to talk to anybody. Um, but if you have to interact, put up a plate glass shield. Now you can talk to the person. You can you can interact. You hear what they're saying. But if they're sending you uh, difficult energy. It'll hit the glass and bounce off. It's not going to go into your auric field. It's not going to affect your aura as much. At the same time, you can't shield forever. That's exhausting. Mm -hmm. You know, so understanding uh, the right environment and, and the detrimental environments for you and avoiding those is really important. Yeah, I think... Um the whole grounding thing, what was coming while you were talking as well, is that for us to ground is how also we can get our answers or our spiritual downloads, you know, being aware of the energetic consciousness that's above us. The only way it can come down is if we are grounded, at least yep. this is my perception, <laughs> but I'm picking up, is that it can come down a lot easier and because we are feeling our feet on the ground, we are, we are feeling safe and secure in where we are. So then we are allowed to feel those other dimensions and energies that are around us. And so, um, and yeah, the whole term um, energetic consciousness, yeah, is, I think it is the, the greatest term to have because when you are out and about, you are, you're just interacting with energies. It's not really people or who or what, it's just the energies around you. And so if you can become aware and put up those shields, which I think is a really good tip, for all our listeners out there to really understand their energy and to be aware of those things. So I love that you brought up the importance of enhancing our connection mm -hmm. to the divine because that's when we get 
hits, I call them hits, you know, divine downloads, whatever, whatever way that you as an individual get the information that you get and the type of information, it's different for everybody. I teach a whole intuition class and helping people find the best way for them to connect or understanding, do, do I use a tool? Do I not use a tool? Um, you know, which tool is it? Do I get relationship information? Do I know about pregnant women? Like everybody has a different, right, gift. Um, but there's so much noise that if you don't manage the noise, you're not going to hear it. And so the people who sit there and go, you know, I don't get any intuitive hits. I don't get information. I don't get messages from the divine. Yeah, you do. <laughs> You're just not hearing it. It's it's competing with all this other stuff, you know. And so you want to make sure that you're you're open enough, you're clear enough, you're grounded enough to your point to get these messages in an objective way so that you're not judging them, you're not rejecting them. Mm -hmm. Um and and that you're trusting them. And for my students who are you know, students of of intuitive methods, tr self trust is hugely difficult. Everybody's like, "Oh, I got this information, but I don't know if it's right." So, like, it, in one class, I had this woman. We do this exercise where we try to pick up an, a bit of information from a person that we've paired off with, and this woman was like, "Oh." I see this, and she was so reluctant, we had to like drag it out of her. I see this place where it's like a horse farm, and this is where you should be living. And I see, I see ground around you, and I see horses, and I see... And the other person was like, no, no, no. And she's like, okay, but that's what I'm getting, and I was reluctant to say it. Turns out, after some prodding, the person she was picking it up from, she finally admitted, you know, well, that's been my dream, but I can't see how that can possibly happen. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So sometimes it's hard to validate what you're getting, and that makes it even harder to trust. Yeah. But, you know, the three enemies of energetic consciousness and, and getting these divine downloads is fear, doubt, and worry. It'll block it every time. We're great at blocking, aren't we? It's so much easier and more exhausting <laughs> than actually trusting and accepting <laughs> and flowing. You know, they think that the flow is the hard part. It's it's not once you start trusting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really great to say in these times as well that – you know, if with this pandemic or what have you, you know, flow with it, flow with the unknown as what I what I said, and to really know that you're okay and trust it and trust in that. And um, yeah, just the logicalness of our planet that we have right now is definitely something that is hard to flow with. And I think yeah, learning about yourself first, and then being able to project that into the world is how we can change this paradigm or change the ways that we have right now on this earth so and part of your life path is yes self-awareness it's it's called the great work of the self in occult philosophy so in the great work of the self you have to understand what you believe what is your personal philosophy forget about you know, what you grew up with and what your parents think you should believe and, and all these, these paradigms that are around you. You have to understand, do I really believe that? Like one of my core beliefs is that everything happens for a reason. And so if you start with that premise and it, you understand that, like I've seen a thousand examples of it in my lifetime for me, that everything that happens, while you might not have embraced it initially and you you didn't anticipate it or want it, always turned out way better than anything I could have come up with. <laughs> you know, finding how, you know, oh, well, I want this. 
thank God, so many times it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So what do you actually believe? And start there. Because then that, that provides context for all the things that happen in the present and going forward. Yeah, and it really is a journey of awareness, you know, and I think, you know, our life is designed for that. It's part of it. And at this time, especially, we can get so much more awareness of ourselves because the environment is kind of at bay. Shut down. <laughs> and um, then you start, the inner environment becomes the story. And that's what I have found is my body loves the peace, but my mind took a little bit to unravel it because it wanted to still be moving. And you're not this, like you said, back to your beliefs. If you're not accomplishing, you're not successful. If you're not doing this or that, you're not productive. And I was like, wow. So then at this time, we can really get to know our internal ways as well. Perfect example, Lynn. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, I'm not being productive. Boy, that'll take you into, <laughs> like, outer space. If you, you know, you start, like, criticizing yourself and judging and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. I think a lot of people are running into that part of themselves and the point is you can't do anything. Yeah. You know, if it's not via internet or whatever, you know, uh, you can't go meet people, you can't do classes, you know, everything has to be online. And thus, it's kind of like there's this part that's like, oh, thank God I don't have to do anything. <laughs> But I, and that's when I realized it's when going back to what you said, like, what do you believe? There's part of those internal beliefs that were given me mm -hmm. that were part of the paradigms that were. And, you know, who says sitting down and looking outside or watching the birds or enjoying yourself is not productive? I mean, that's what we're here for yes. is to have more joy. Yeah. And where's the gratitude here? right? This is the perfect time to really enhance your gratitude mm. for having a safe place to be, for not being sick, for um, the technology that allows us to stay connected when we couldn't have in, in the Spanish flu of 1918, you know, how did they communicate? That must have been a nightmare. But look what we're able to do. You guys started this podcast in the middle of a pandemic. You you chose to be creating instead of diminishing your value. And so you're bringing all this value to people. But thank God for the technology that allows us to do it. And the brains that we have to be able to understand the technology to be able to do it. I mean, that was happening even before. I've been with my publisher for 11 years, I think. Um, love him. Never met him. <laughs> Was introduced to him by somebody I also never physically met. <laughs> we, we had a relationship going on that then she introduced me and thought we would be great together, and, and that's proven to be true. But you don't have to be physically in the same space with somebody but just know back to energetic consciousness energy travels right it has no barrier at all and so like i love you guys we we know each other in a physical space but we're still connected energetically and you guys are on the other side of the country from me yeah and so we can still attach to people energetically. We don't have to be in a physical space. But just remember, you could still feel that energy coming at you for those who can be difficult, right? That's why even if you're, you're on the phone or you're on Zoom, or, put that shield up, you know, if, if you feel a little wonky um, when you're around certain people. That energy is still hitting so we can be... Um, we can, we can be connected. 
and putting a shield up is like it's simple right it's not like some extravagant process like it's just more of an intention or you want to explain so, yeah it's more like it's a visualization and i know some people and i've been hearing this a lot lately which surprises me a lot of people have trouble visualizing <laughs> So if you can't visualize a plate glass shield, so you always want it like arm's length out, up, you know, to your fingertips and down to the ground, plate glass window between you and that other person, um, on the phone, you're blocking the energy. So if you can't see the plate glass window, you want to um, feel it. Mm. Right. So, what's it? What does it feel like when you look out the window at the world outside? You could feel it, right? You could sense it being a certain dimension, right? And you can, you can imagine, you know, the the other person's energy hitting that glass. So, if you're talking to somebody at a screen of a window, that's very different than if you were trying to do it through the glass right they're kind of muffled a little bit sense those kinds of things but what i do recommend is while it's not a complicated process that you practice it before you need to do it because <laughs> i find that a lot of people forget to do it you know as the interaction begins or before it begins um and then suddenly they start feeling anxious and that's that other person's energy starting to churn you, right? Hitting your aura directly. So you need to be able to do it at a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. I remember the, the very first time I ever did it, I didn't even know about shields or about that. It was, it was during a Reiki class. And there was an interaction that I was having that it, suddenly it felt like, oh, my God, you know, like, what is this? And my teacher afterward came running over, and he's like, you know, you just threw up a shield. I was like, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like I needed to protect myself in the presence of this person. And he's like, oh, yeah. And he saw it happen. So you can be doing it. Um, naturally, organically, and not even recognize that that's what you're doing. Mm. So when you put some, to your point, intention behind it, it's even stronger. I think, you know what, we do in a lot of ways um, put up shields of protection and to support ourselves without realizing it, whereas energy consciousness is. Because then also people have shields that never come down. Mm. yes so they're Great never point. open to the loving or the kindness or ever because they're seeing the world from this very disconnected positioning in their own bubble that they're not receiving either the goodness um so it's an interesting thing because i you know when you were saying that that's what i thought of like it's probably part of our innate nature yes of protection and then being conscious is really where the wiseness is because then maybe our life has brought us like friendliness and kindness and we open our heart to everybody but then that's when this energetic consciousness like as an empath as we are as well you need to not have that openness not that you don't love the world but that you care for yourself in a way that's positive because yeah. you can interact with people that maybe aren't your energetic vibe, but you don't have to stay there and you don't have to take it in. Well, you, you don't have to keep all your chakras open mm -hmm. so that like every interaction, whether it's professional, whether it's a psychic interaction, whether it's, you know, whoever you're, you're doing services with, you're, you're having an energy exchange, right? Your friends, you're having an energy exchange. And if it's very one-sided, like you feel like you're giving everything and you're not receiving back. And again, you're, you're not, when you're in high service, you're not asking for a return on your investment, right? But you don't want to be subservient either. 
and allowing people to take you for granted, to take your energy. One great way to know if that's happening is if you think about all the people you know and think about the ones that after you interact with them, you're exhausted, right? If you're tired afterward, they're pulling on your energy and you're letting them. Mm. And that's when you want to put the shield up. Because I have to tell you, divine love is one of the most amazing protections you can have because it's beaming out of you. It's that lifting and that beauty that comes out and it's like bound, boundless, right? It's coming off of you and it could be 10 feet out. And if, if you're beaming like that, nothing's going to hit you in the physical, right? It's, it's going to stay out there and it's an amazing feeling and you can just give as much as you want without being depleted. So again, but what's that energetic consciousness, that energetic awareness, that self-awareness, the people who are highly sensitive, um, have, have less of an auric, field around them ideally it shouldn't be less than six inches from your body but really better is hands you know as as outstretched arms you want your your aura that far out right think about the the wizards of of myth right and they're carrying their special wand their staff where is it? Not down here. Their staff extends above their head, at least arm's length, right? That's the edge of their auric field. Mm. When they're there, they're in their power, right? You're not diminishing your power. You're expanding it out. Because think about it. When people are upset, what happens? They pull their energy in. Ah, I'm vulnerable. Oh, my God. Well, now you're really vulnerable. Because now your aura is like nothing, and it's hitting your physical body, right? So um, beaming out is the best protection, whether it's weight light, divine love, uh, wisdom, whatever it is, yeah, push it out there. Well, and I know um, Greg Braden is someone that I look highly to and he's all about the heart math institute and how to connecting the brain and the heart connection and how okay. your heart has a magnetic field that can go out just by practicing gratitude and compassion and all these wonderful words and so um yeah that's just such a great i think it's coming out to do that more to keep your energy out and to be grateful and to have that as um a protection and and sense so that's cool it's because gratitude and compassion are high vibrational frequencies so the higher the vibrational frequency of like we attract what we are right so if we're complaining and we're upset or, uh, right that <laughs> really diminishes that's heavy people can feel it it's like uh, right but then if you have compassion and love and gratitude those highest vibrational frequency um mindsets uh ways of being whatever you want to call it energetic you know outputs um that that really elevates you and your ability to stay healthy safe give other people what they need without diminishing it for yourself there's a book, uh, you probably read it, The Hidden Messages of Water. Mm. You ever read that? And uh, the demonstration, some people, you know, some people don't believe in the method that was used, but it's a, I think it's a good illustration of how energy manifests and what it might look like. It's organizing principle. Because you, because you can't see energy, for some it's really hard to imagine or to understand how it's affecting them. And that's why we have to use all four layers. I call it the four-part inner guidance system, right? So we've got the physical hit that, that happens. Um, you know, are you getting heart palpitations? 
Where's your heart lifting? Like when you see pictures of puppies, <gasps> right? That's, that's a physical sensation. Uh, the emotional layer, where is it making you feel downtrodden, upset? Or is it, is it elevating you? Are you feeling happy? And those are simple, you know, I, on my YouTube channel, I, I go over the four-part inner guidance system. Um, the mental part, are you getting these negative automatic thoughts? as a result or are you staying open to ideas that might come in right and then there's the spirit layer where you're being inspired and you're getting these downloads these divine downloads and you're understanding all this stuff that only comes from spirit and you're seeing patterns that that are you know interconnected and so all four of those layers are how you can sense what the energy is doing to you and what your energy is yeah, that's a lovely way. Like, a very great conversation on energetic yeah. awareness yeah. in different ways than a lot of people view it or talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for that word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's keep it simple, folks. You know, like it doesn't have to be complicated. <laughs> well, is there anything, last words you'd like to give to our listeners before we end this episode, Diane? you know go to my website and take advantage of all the free stuff dianewing.com i have a, a deck that i wrote and designed on there you can get insights if you if you join my community it's free to use unlimited um full-blown app of pathways my my deck you can get all kinds of free um articles on there and uh, you could check out my books I also have dianewingauthor.com if you're only interested in my books and that's fine <laughs> um, you know and and you can uh, contact me through the website too or diane at dianewing.com awesome well thank you so much for being with us today yes thank you for having me I love you guys <laughs> The conversation we had with Diane today about energetic consciousness was incredible. It totally hit all different aspects and different topics of what it means and how to ground yourself, how to protect yourself, and how to really have that awareness for yourself. So I truly enjoyed this podcast episode. I did too, and I think we looked at things a little differently than some um, we sometimes do. And what really hit me was... You know, notice how you're responding to your environment. And right there is going to show you where you energetically need to figure out some things about yourself or your boundaries or the, the what you're doing to make things a lot more um, productive and enjoyable. And I also loved the gratitude, the blissful high vibe, that if we're really streaming that high vibe, we're also naturally protected. I love that too. And and having a reaction is seen as a bad thing, but really it is a tool. It is a direction for you to look in your life to see how to shift it and to flow with the uncertainty or with your responses. And I just, I agree. I totally loved how she said that because reactions aren't bad. It's just no more awareness to our lives, to our vessels, to our mind. That's all it takes, people. <laughs> well, that's why I like energetic consciousness. It's really being aware of your energy, the energy around, and how it's all intermixing. And um, if we're all one field, and especially for an empath, when you're having that, like you said, it's a good thing. And Diane has so many gifts. Really spent her life studying the occult arts and bringing you know, information and support. I know that we've both used her. Yeah. I'm really glad we got to share with her. Me she too. She is definitely magical. So go check her out. All her contact information is down below for to get her books, her websites, all the things she has to offer to this world. And she has lots of free stuff, as she mentioned. So go check it out. And if you love this episode, share it with your friends and family. Give us a like, a subscribe, leave us a comment if you have any questions or concerns for this episode or want to learn more about Diane. And thank you so much again for giving us your time and your space, your energy for this episode. We really appreciate it and just keep spreading your light and staying vibrant out there. <laughs>